I'd always had this background interest in science. I always wanted to do it. I didn't ever think I'd make a living at it. So that was kind of the reason I didn't actually get a degree in science in college. I was actually um, an economics major. Wound up meeting someone kind of um, serendipitously who worked on cichlids, and they immediately invited me to go to Madagascar, which kind of led to my whole dissertation project. I was interested in um, diversity of fishes in Madagascar, not just the cichlids, but other freshwater fish. C cichlids I've been working on now for over, over 20 years. I just love their behavior. They were so kind of charismatic into, as, as fish go. But now I've kind of branched out into marine fish. So I work on a, a bunch of different groups of marine fishes, and primarily from kind of the, the angle of bioluminescence and biofluorescence. A bioluminescent organism can control its light. They do it, they have different filters and shutters on their bodies, so they're not always, you know, giving off giving off light. They can turn off if they want to hide from a predator. If they want to signal, they can turn on the light. In contrast, biofluorescence, when the light's incident upon any of these organisms, they're going to be fluorescing. They have no control over it. It's simply the molecules in their body absorbing that high energy light and giving it off as a lower energy wavelength. We don't know nearly as much about biofluorescence as we do about bioluminescence. We just didn't have the techniques years ago. I mean, it kind of takes somebody going out at night and shining specific blue lights on things, having a specific filter over their mask or something to see this. So once we went out and had the equipment to be able to do it, we found out it's kind of all over the tree of life for fish. Not only bony fish, but you know, the cartilaginous fish, sharks and rays fluoresce as well. Technology is kind of constantly in improving um, the type of research we do. These high resolution 4K type cameras we use and also very, very low light sensors that weren't available even a few years ago allow us to examine bioluminescence in a way that no one's ever been able to before. And another um, tool we're potentially trying to develop to use in our research is the exosuit. I've been in the suit and, and tested it out, and I think it'll be, it'll be a great tool. What it allows somebody to do is stay down for hours at a time at ambient or surface pressure, so you're not, a diver's not um, susceptible to the bends or any issues of traditional scuba. We have to be able to observe or observe organisms um, interacting with each other. So that's kind of one of the next steps of some of these technologies like the exosuit using submersibles. We hope to be able to just spend a lot more time underwater looking at, at these animals. But even other aspects, the new next generation sequencing techniques are allowing us to look at investigate these proteins, these fluorescent proteins in, the, in these different fish groups. GFP, the green fluorescent protein, kind of revolutionized biomedical sciences. So a lot of the, the, these fish could be a kind of a treasure trove for additional fluorescent proteins that could be extremely useful.